The interesting thing is that it actually stems from a number of different concerns that regulators have. So one, which you brought up, is around you know illicit financial activity and you know making sure that uh, that these rails are not facilitating that. Uh, but at the same time, you have basically consumer protection and you know regulatory frameworks that have to be enforced, and that requires you know your customer regulation. Um, and uh, you know when you look at anti fraud, that touches you know know your customer. Uh, practices, really a lot of things traced down to that, at least in part. I do think that we're going to get some clarity on that, you know, over the next year in a number of jurisdictions. I think we're also going to see a lot of clarity on what the framework ends up being for stablecoin issuances, token issuances in general, and markets regulation. Yeah, that was actually what I was going to touch on, Sam, because obviously I would assume, actually, I should say rather that you wouldn't have any issue when it comes to KYC or AMLCTF, but it's some of the other regulatory matters that I suppose would, would potentially create some kind of contention across the board, not just for FTX, but for your other peers when it does come to this industry. So what don't you want to see coming out of the regulators? Is it just too sharp teeth when it comes to the regulation or is there any kind of specific aspects of proposed regulation that you, you don't want to see in 2022? Absolutely. Let me tell you two horror stories that I, I'd like us to avoid. Um, one of them is a world in which Bitcoin futures spot Bitcoin, Ethereum futures spot Ethereum, stablecoin futures spot stablecoin, tokenized stock futures and spot tokenized stocks end up in eight different regulatory frameworks with eight different sets of market regulation, eight different cyber supervisory roles, different aspects from the reporting, um, from the licensing, and it ends up being a total mess to interface with from our perspective as a marketplace, from the consumer's perspective, they end up with their capital completely fractured. And from a regulator standpoint, trying to you know, piece through what happened and hitting roadblocks as they, they gen, you know, sort of venture into new and new jurisdictions. So that's one thing that I'd like to avoid. And I'd love to see a sort of coherent, standardized regulatory framework be applied to lots of forms of the crypto markets industry, you know, in the same way that we have for you know, futures in general, that we have for stocks in general. Um, that's one big thing. And then the other thing is I think it's really important for stable coins to be able to function how they are, that they that there at least exist some regulated stable coins with open networks, networks where anyone can get access to them rather than just a few banks being able to access them. Because if only the banks can access a stable coin, then it hasn't served its original purpose, which was disintermediating a lot of financial players and returning finance um, back to the consumer. There has to be more oversight of stable coins from you know consumer protection angle, making sure they are backed as they say they are. But I think it's important that they're allowed to remain open networks while doing that. 